All right, well, what we find in this Pinus colteri, this is the native coulter pine here in California, one of our native pines. This tree has been infected by borers. We can see as you look up and down the trunk here, the amount of weeping that's going on. The tree is really bleeding. You can actually see the sap. It, it looks like cake frosting dripping down here. So this is a pretty serious attack. The tree is trying to sap out the organism by locking it up and gulfing it and sap and stopping its activity. But the, these borers may have penetrated the tree's defenses. You can see this infection is really strong and it's happened in a matter of just a few weeks. This has been noticed. The bleeding is quite extensive. Look at that. That's about three quarters of an inch deep right there, easily. That's a puddle of sap. It's flowed out a good six inches from the trunk of the tree. It's like tar. It's still wet and sticky. It hasn't congealed yet. It gives you a sense of the volume of bleeding that has occurred at these wound sites. We're going to apply one of the few things that we know will stop this, this infestation, and that's the ACECAP 97. It's a systemic insecticide. It is not sprayed into the air. I think in many cases these kinds of insecticides are much safer than the airborne types. This is a life and death situation for the tree. If nothing is done, the tree will probably die. The concept here is that this insecticide is contained within a capsule inside this plastic matrix here. And when this is inserted into the drilled hole in the trunk, this little rim makes a seal at the cambium layer, trapping the sap inside the cavity that's been created by the drill hole. The sap in the presence of the insecticide dissolves the capsule, and it is said that the sap will flow to the top of the tree within about three days. There are safety precautions with the systemic insecticides. They can't be used anywhere and everywhere. We must use good safety practices. You have to wear gloves, eye protection. We can't use this in any fruiting cultivars. Citrus, plum, apricot, wild cherry, any of those, we would have to exclude the use of this compound. The poison can go up the food chain and possibly poison birds or raccoons or other mammals. Also, the frequency of application is limited. We can't apply every year, every year to a tree and expect the tree to be fine with this. We're going to apply according to instructions and deal with this pine borer that we have present in this particular tree. So we begin by creating a spiral of application holes, say four inches or six inches apart, going around the circumference of the tree in a spiral so that we're not creating a structural weakness in the tree by many, many penetration holes. Okay, we've put a little mark here at an inch and a quarter depth. We can see we want to drill in to the point that we've gone into the cambium, leaving our cambium layer about right there. Okay. Now we're going to apply We're using a, a flat-headed punch here so that we don't puncture the ace cap surround. There we go. We're right about depth there. There, deep enough to seal at the cambium there. We don't want it to be too shallow. All right, we're going to come around the trunk here. We're going to measure radially but then drill our holes in a spiral. So our first ace cap is down here. Our next one will be up here. We're just going to work our way around the trunk radially. About every four inches of circumference, we need another ace cap. We're about 66 inches in circumference. So if we're to apply ace caps every four inches, that's going to be about 16 of them or so. For purposes of monitoring, we're going to remove all of the dead limbs from the tree, anything that's dead, and then see if there's any more retreat. This will be our way of monitoring the tree's response. If there is more dieback, we'll be able to differentiate it. And if there isn't, we'll be able to differentiate that as well. So if the tree continues to live and stay green, I think we could say we've won this battle.